Hello and welcome to Poetry Friday. This week's poem of choice is called Ace of Bass by Fiona Benson, presumably a play on the 90s pop group Ace of Bass. Um, I recommend you listen to All That She Wants is another baby, she's gone tomorrow. Yeah, that one. Just, just for the sheer nostalgia of it. This week's Poetry Friday is slightly different. I'm going to be reading out my tiny letter as a kind of trial run for what it might be like to script a podcast rather than a read out of the poem. And with that being said, I'm just going to get going. I will be reading off a piece of paper. I do apologise about that. Supply teaching works like this. You get up, you get dressed and you wait for a call. A voice on the other end of the line will tell you the name of the school, the nearest tube, and whether you will have a lovely day. If there is no mention of a lovely day, you will know that you will not be teaching, but spending most of your day maintaining order, acting as a human door, one more obstacle between the students and freedom. One sunny Monday morning, I get one of the lovely calls. When I arrive at reception, I am handed a manila folder. Inside the folder is a complicated map and a rainbow coloured colour coded timetable. I am already 30 minutes late. Before I can find out where I'm supposed to be and why, I am frog marched to my first class. At the front of the classroom, a woman holding a walkie talkie is waiting for me. She gets up from a grey polypropylene chair, says, Thank you, ladies, and swiftly, without looking back, closes the door behind her. I am now alone with 30 silent teenage girls and a folder. I put my bag down as they stare at me with completely expressionless faces, their mouths closed, each one a neatly ruled line. I know it is a geography lesson, but that is all I know. So I ask the girls, what have you been learning? No answer. I carry on. Tell me one thing you can remember from last lesson. Gradually, a few louder girls mumble something about human development. I eventually locate handouts in the folder and the girls, without much of a battle, quietly get on with their work. As they leave for break, they tell me they like my painted nails and my multicoloured polka dot socks and tell me, you look pretty today, miss. The neat mouths become smiles. The whole day is similar. I encounter charming, well-behaved girls, polite, industrious girls. As I leave for the day, I send a text to the supply agency. What a lovely school. But something about the day gnaws at me. Quiet classes are unnerving. There is something not quite right about children being so well-ordered, so docile. Why aren't the girls rowdy? Why don't they shout over one another? Why don't they speak before they think? Why not jostle for attention? How comes they don't shout out half-formed thoughts? What would it take to get them animated and want to argue? What would open their mouths and let a fiery, passionate point make its way out into the recycled classroom air? It made me think about Fiona Benson's Ace of Bass, a poem I heard performed at the South Bank over a year earlier. Good poems seep into your consciousness. Images you once heard will float to the surface, bubbling up just when you need them. And there it was, a few days after I had left the school, the image of a tall iced glass. And now this is a small excerpt from the poem. That was the summer hormones poured into me like an incredible chemical cocktail into a tall iced glass. My teenage heart, a glossy maraschino cherry bobbing on top. Here it was, the feeling of being a teenage girl. When I hear the words chemical cocktail, I cannot help but think of bombs and explosions, a deadly mix of substances, something toxic and banned that shouldn't be put together. I think of liquid ready to fizz up, escape, break through and shatter. But this explosion is contained, frozen behind iced glass, the way polite girls can hold all of their yearning and desire behind a lovely, pleasant smile. 
their sugary fizzed up hearts, red sweet things untethered and unmoored and yearning inside them. I cannot help but wonder what the world would be like if we could let girls live outside of the tall ice glass. How different, how thrilling it would be if girls would be allowed to be, ex be allowed to explode once in a while. Let all the chemicals seep out a little, fizz and bubble up over the top. What a lovely day that would be. So there we go. Do I read the poem as well? Oh, go on then. If you want to stay for the poem, I'll read the whole poem out. So you'll hear the first excerpt again. That was the summer hormones poured into me like an incredible chemical cocktail into a tall iced glass. My teenage heart, a glossy maraschino cherry bobbing on top as that rainbow shimmered through me, lighting me up like a fish and I was drunk, obsessed, desperate to be touched, colour streaming through my iridescent body. As the wide summer night threw open its doors and called us into the evening to sit in its love seat and gossip about boys, Though we'd have fucked anyone back then, each other had we dared, right there on the tennis courts, all us unparented girls, released from the boarding house to practice our backhand. Desire between us like a shared addiction in its crooked spoon, desire and the holding back, the terrible restraint. As we listen to the top 40 or our three CDs till the batteries run down, till the asphalt's grit had pressed its intricate red pattern on our thighs. And we talked about who we'd done what with whom and how it felt. All of us quickening and sex wasn't here yet, but it was coming. And we were running towards it, its gorgeous euphoric mist, pushing into our own starved bodies at night for relief. Like the after calm might last, like there was a deep well of love on the other side. So that poem is from a collection called Vertigo and Ghost by Fiona Benson. The rest of the collection is some half of it is dealing with um, violence and a kind of abusive relationship, but using the metaphor of a woman sp speaking to Zeus. And then the second half is um, more focused on the first year after having given birth to a girl and um, so it's kind of more about domestic life um, and what that feels like and yeah the poem the poet is Fiona Benson so you can uh, you can buy that collection and it's it's quite a visceral and I suppose challenging read because it's not necessarily easy subject matter but the imagery is beautiful so that is Poetry Friday for this week um, so my wish for you this week is to let yourself fizz and bubble up if you need to. Let things out. This is me casually reaching for the button to stop it. Um, okay, see you next week. Goodbye. No, this just doesn't... What's the point of this? What is the point of it? <laughs>